-hmm. and he is currently sitting in jail now until his trial. Okay, and you feel that, that that's definitely progress and that's a good thing that he's in jail before he's been convicted? Well, not only that, I think um, the willingness of the Mount Laurel Police Department, um, their, their willingness to be open. For that. Um, during that interview, you had said that uh, the, when the officer interacted with Mr. Matthews, that he called him by name and told him to go home. And it, it seemed like you were unhappy with that type of de-escalation. Right, because it feels like um, he had such a personable relationship, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, with the person as opposed to being able to build a personal relationship with the victim. Hey, that the Mount Law Police Department has been very transparent. Their internal investigation, internal affairs mm -hmm. have been very transparent and um, walking the process step by step and ensuring mm -hmm. that they're collecting ev all evidence to continue. In the right. As far as I'm concerned right now, they are really doing you know what they need to do to make this investigation move along and they're not prolonging it they're taking the necessary steps to make sure they have gathered all the evidence and i think that's it that's that's something to go out to them definitely make you happy uh, gary is that uh over a year ago new jersey attorney general's office has revamped the use of force policy right. and some of the mandatory training that all law enforcement officers go through and some of that involves de-escalation some of that involves immediate officer intervention so if two or more officers are out at a location and one officer sees another officer going back to the Derek Chauvin incident where the junior officers actually made a statement to yep. Mr. Chauvin uh, you know, former officer Chauvin that hey maybe we should roll him over and he said no I got this in New Jersey, that, that's against the law. Right. It's always been against the law right. in New Jersey. But now we're going to have active training to try and make sure that a junior officers are empowered to do that. It, that actually has been going on. And part of one of the things I teach is verbal de-escalation and verbal judo. So I'm very, it's very important to me, as it is to you and your organization, right. to ensure that we empower officers to do that. Not only hold them accountable if they do it wrong, but give them ways to actually do it. You know, I don't think every police officer we have in our country is bad. Right. I see the police force should make up uh, the ratio in which the neighborhood is a very diverse uh, city. Mm -hmm. So we should have a ratio of police officers that reflect exactly Good, that. I, the picture I saw in the paper was the Deptford police officers out there eating pizza with some of the people that were out there demonstrating for your cause. Yeah. Does that make you feel good that the police were, were out there engaging? Well, I think that's part of, the, part of it. You know, I think they need to understand that their job is to serve and protect everybody out mm -hmm. there. I think the police were out there in regards because they don't like bail reform. They don't there. like bail reform because they lock someone out and they get out. Mm -hmm. For Especially for the act that happened with Maggie Fruit out in Somerdale. Mm -hmm. The police did their job in terms of, um, of, of arresting her and charging her. Mm -hmm. But because of the bail reform law, she was able to come home. But I also charge that to the prosecutor and to the judge of making a conscious heart decision because ultimately the judge didn't have to do that. And I, that, to see um, the guy from Mount Laurel be sitting in prison behind uh, words, he didn't do anything that you know was like attempted murder. But he's sitting in jail until a trial. And mm -hmm. the fact that she's home right now, mm -hmm. it just goes to show that our system is broken. Right, right. So it seems like that you're the, the least those two incidents that you're happy with the what the police did. Um, but you're dis, dis happy or unhappy with how the uh, criminal justice system, the judicial branch of government, which the police don't have anything to do with. Right. I mean, they present the strongest case they have. And I believe in the Mount Laurel case, the video hadn't come out until a couple of days after the initial response by the officers. Is that correct? So our judiciary system is at fault at this time simply because you know, at the least with the outcry of the of the public should call for a probable cause here and by the prosecutor to represent this. And then once that video in Mount Laurel dropped, more residents were able to come and present the police with more evidence, mm -hmm. which made it much easier for them to then seek an arrest warrant, which ultimately was issued. And then they went out, you know, after getting pelted with bottles and rocks and pepper spray in the face, by some of the protest protesters out there, then they did affect an arrest. Right. So, like, what are your thoughts on, you know, it seems like some people want to point to the fact that if this video didn't come out, the police wouldn't have been so motivated to do it, whereas the prosecutor's office and the police are indicating that since the video came out, it gave more residents the ability to present evidence. And we all know, Derek Chauvin, when there's video evidence, it makes it much easier for law enforcement to prosecute. Yeah. Uh, um, to a degree. I find on the line where, where we separate from peaceful protesters to 
rioters. Right. And, you know, at Mount Laurel points, there was, was peaceful. You know, the video that, that you and I were on TV the same right. day, um, some of you and your friends and people with the movement were in front of the police department, 100% peaceful. Right. No problem. Right. But throwing rocks and water bottles and pepper spraying the police officers clearly is riot illegal. Right. And do you feel those people should be arrested who did that? Um, I feel like, you know, the tension's there. Um, the amount of time that we had to wait for an action to be taken. Mm -hmm. So I understand the law that governs us here. And I, let me make this perfectly clear. We don't condone in any um, type of violence whatsoever. Um, but I will say the frustrations of the people at that time is what has warranted um, the actions of, of some of them out there mm -hmm. as the police did, you know, try to you know, do what they could do to see the matter out. He probably would not have been arrested if we didn't show up there in the numbers in which we showed up. And it's obvious because he was home. Mm -hmm. There's a video out there in which I first confronted him before everybody. Do you believe that the people who assaulted the officers while they're arresting him should be arrested themselves? No.